Bandwidth for MacBreak is brought to you by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer, and once again we have with us Billy Fox. Welcome back, Billy. Thank you, Mark. Billy, as we talked about earlier, is an editor down in Los Angeles and has worked on uh, many TV and feature films over the course of a, a very long career, including Band of Brothers, uh, Black Snake Moan, and most recently, uh, Traitor with Dan Don Cheadle on Blu-ray. And today, we're going to talk a little about motion. And as you may know, I'm a big motion fan, and I was very excited to find out that you actually use motion when you're editing a feature film. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit of what you do. Well, I love motion. It's, uh, it's a tool that I use a lot for varying reasons. Sometimes it's um, simple things like uh, cleaning up a shot if there's a camera bobble or if there's a scratch or if there's some reflection in, the, in a window or something. I'll go into motion, take that shot, bring it back into Final Cut. Okay. And sometimes in this particular instance, um, we have a shot where um, there was a car explosion and there were a couple of plates and we needed to comp something together so that I could proceed on the editorial process because the length of the shot is determined by how these two plates come together. So you're part of the reason that you, you're actually creating visual effects in motion hmm. that, are, that are temporary effects. Correct. Right? right? Okay. But the, the reason you're doing that is in order to be able to figure out the timing of the shots? Well, primarily hmm. there's two reasons. One is to uh, the timing of the shots the length that the effect actually has, um, and also so that I have a, a very clean, acceptable visual effect shot for the cut so that I can continue editing, so that if we need to show it to people, if we even do screenings for an audience, it's clean enough to be able to do, so that at some point a visual effect will be, re uh, a shot or a scene will be deleted from a movie. We are able to just keep them in, in motion effects, and then if we finish and lock the movie and the scene stays and the visual effect stays, then um, the actual effect is done and we don't actually throw out uh, v finished visual effects okay, that cost so not, a lot of money. So you're not spending a lot of money on a, on, a, on a very detailed visual effects shot, but you're able to pull off a visual effects shot using font, using motion Correct. that is that is good enough that you can use in screenings that uh, people can watch and and Absolutely. probably don't even notice Absolutely. that it's not a, a totally finished thing. Right. Great. So we're so we're looking at a a scene from Trader right here. Yes, this is one of the first scenes in the movie. Uh, where uh, the Don Cheadle character, the young boy, uh, comes out to um, a car and um, his father gets into the car and this is the end of the, uh, the first shot. And then the second shot, the second plate, is uh, at that point, at this point, um, they broke camera, they put in a different car, about three hours of time passed, and now this is, you can see the shadows are entirely different. Um, people are, of course, in a different position. Okay, so you're switching back and forth between the first plate and where the, the man plate. gets into the car right. and the second plate, which was several hours later, and there's nobody in the car now, so nobody's actually going to get hurt in this next so little So then we do this. Boom. And the car explodes. And the car explodes. So I needed to come up with just a pretty down and dirty comp of these two plates. So I took them into, into soundtrack, sound into uh, motion, and basically, um, the, the, the challenges in this was certainly um, the light and all of the th uh, aspects, but um, the positioning and the fact that the first plate was handheld okay. and was moving around at a certain pace. The second shot had a little bit of a handheld, but the camera was in a different position, a little bit different position, and a completely different motion to it. So, so in those two shots, the camera was actually in a little bit of a different location. Mm. It was moving differently. Mm. It was a later time of day. They had moved the, ca the car out and put it back. So those, those shots car. really don't match each other very well. No. So you're trying to pull something off to make those shots match each other and have the timing work out for when the explosion occurs. Correct. Okay, so what did you do in motion? So basically what I did in motion, we have the two plates. We have the dad plate and then we have the explosion plate up here. On the dad plate, I had it analyze the motion, the camera motion of um, the first shot. And then I took the second shot, the explosion, and I first stabilized the shot so there was no camera motion whatsoever. 
Okay. And then I took the um, the analyzed information from the first plate and did a match move so that it the motion was now the same. Okay, so, so you forced those together. plates to move together yes. as if those two cameras were one camera right. and kind of moved together. And then I built a series of mats, and they're pretty down and dirty. They're not the most gorgeous things, but they really did serve the purpose, and we used this comp for um, our previews with 500 people, and it looked fine. Wow, and I see you've got a few other things on here, a gamma and brightness, so you've added a few filters to try to uh, match the shots exactly. to each other a little better? Yeah, yeah because okay. the lighting had changed so much okay. that we basically, I added the gamma brightness, um, and also a little fade in and a fade out, and, and what we basically achieved, and what you're going to see here actually, this box is going to represent, you're going to see how much the second shot, it's moving it around to try and chase what the first shot was doing. So this box we're looking at here is on the dad plate. Or is it on the second plate? It's on, it's on the, the explosion. Plate. It's on the explosion yeah. plate, and we're so we're comping in a part of the explosion plate with its inside this mask. That's here, correct. And that's going to move around. Right. Okay. Let's see. Ah, uh, so you can see the mask expand as it expand, it, as it plays. And, so you see the smoke and come out. Pivoting. And pivoting, it kind of tilts. And tilts and doing so, all kinds of things. And if you look down at the car itself, it's a pretty good match. It's not bad at all. Yeah, it really pulls it off. I mean, you don't really see. A big difference, and you've retained the first plate in most of it because right. the mask is very small, so you don't see all that time of day change going right. on. And I was tracking the, the the cloud of smoke and trying to make that as smooth as possible. You're also seeing a dirty, uh, the mat is going above the it, the image is going above the mat line, and what what I would eventually do, and you'll see when we show you in a second, that is wiped off. You'll, you'll cut that off. Just cleanly cut it off. Okay, and the way you animated the mask was just, did you turn on recording in motion and just go frame by frame and move the little edit points of the yes. mask? Okay. Yes, yeah, and then went back and edited those, yes. Wow, so not a really a whole lot of things mm -hmm. going on here. You analyzed the motion of one plate, you stabilized the other plate and then matched it to the first plate. Correct. And then use some filters to match them, have the color match a little bit better. Right. And it pulls off a, a really convincing shot. Well, the problem is always that my, the bulk of my time has to be towards the editing. So any effect that I work on really can almost never take more than about an hour. Uh -huh. and, and, or even less. This whole thing mm -hmm. probably took about 45 minutes from taking the two plates in, figuring out how to attack it, and then putting them all together. Um, and then I needed to move on because I have many scenes that are all backing up and I had to keep okay, going. Okay, so you've got more film on its way to you that you've, you've got to work on. So mm -hmm. your, your goal is not to be the best visual effects artist in the world. It's no. to comp together a believable shot to help you with the editing and then to move on to your next uh, Well, next based on this, we determined exactly where the out edit was uh -huh. and where we cut back to the kid. And when the visual effects department, this is the other advantage to it, when the visual effects department got this f shot, they knew exactly how long it's supposed to be. They know exactly how much time from when dad closes the door to when the explosion goes off. Because myself and the director sat there and added frames and made it tighter or made it looser. We determined exactly how long. So there was no guessing. So they get very specific directions of what to mm. do. Well, let's see what they came up with for the, for the final shot then. So we go back to final cut and this is the finish. Timing matches perfectly. Mm -hmm. So they use the exact same thing to make that happen. So there you go, there's a way to use motion in the context of a Final Cut Pro feature film in order to create a temporary effect that's used both for timing purposes for the editor and also for screenings before it's completed uh, for the final film. Mm -hmm. Billy, thanks, that was great. Really thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. All right, take care. And thank you for joining us on MacBreak Studios.